The following program contains content and dramatizations of actual crime scenes that may be disturbing, gruesome, blood-curdling, macabre, ghastly, grisly, unsettling, revolting, repugnant, abhorrid, distasteful, scandalous, shocking, sickening, and could cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, unexplained bleeding, chafing, uncontrollable mood swings, and at times the desire to engage in the very criminal acts viewed on this program. Viewer discretion is advised. In the annals of crime, some cases are just too tough for any one branch of law enforcement to tackle. That's when we call on Crime Team USA. On Thursday, May 15, 1997, Michael Helprin, interior decorator and fiancé of 14 years, returns home after shopping. He has difficulty entering his apartment. He knows there is something definitely wrong. A wave of panic rolls over him. What he finds is too shocking for words. His fiancée of 14 years, Jennifer Armstrong's bloody corpse lies lifeless on the kitchen floor. He makes a frantic call to 911. Oh no! She's dead. She's cut up really bad. And she's bleeding all over my new kitchen floor! I really don't know how I'm gonna get these stains out. Please, come quickly and bring some industrial cleaning products. Hours later, homicide detectives arrive on the scene. What they discover is a veritable slaughterhouse and a murderous modus operandi so bizarre that it leaves Detective Joe Mills, a 20-year veteran of the city's homicide bureau, extremely unsettled. He wastes no time in calling on the professionals of Crime Team USA for assistance. How are we gonna get in? Stand aside. Let me show you how a real FBI agent accesses a building. Did anybody think to maybe try the door first? It won't open. Stand back. Agent DeLarge, what the hell are you doing? You're about to seriously mess up my crime scene. What kind of FBI agent are you? Get in here. This here, the victim's husband. Fiance. Yeah, right, fiance. The victim's down here through the kitchen. Hurry! There's no telling what that blood's doing to my new kitchen floor. I have never seen anything. As you can see from the bloody footprints, our victim was tied up, tickled, and forced to sing and dance show the temples on the good ship lolly. This is one dance routine that didn't go over too well with their audience. She was later bludgeoned and her throat was slashed. She's definitely dead. We can handle it from here. I hope so. I'm gonna go see what the fiance has to say about this. You guys handle it. 
Well, with 20 years on the force, I don't normally enjoy turning my cases over to anyone else, but these guys are supposed to be the professionals. We can use all the help we can get. Joseph Necrofiliano, lead forensic scientist on the case, takes pictures of the corpse in an attempt to determine how the crime was perpetrated. He moonlights as a fashion photographer, bringing out the best in his subjects, living or dead. Could you pull that back a little bit? Yes, perfect, perfect. Oh, what's that over there? Could you lift that up a little bit? Meanwhile, miles from the crime scene, another angle to this investigation is set in motion. Victoria Wainsgate is a psychic clairvoyant who has worked on some of the most baffling crime cases. On almost one occasion, her psychic intuition has led to the apprehension of a known criminal. Madam Wainsgate is not involved in the initial investigation. Any knowledge of the crime or victim could seriously compromise her clairvoyant capabilities. While Wensgate enters a meditative state, we move to the profiler of the team. As with any case like this, suspicion immediately falls on the husband or partner. The majority of crimes of passion are committed by someone intimately involved with the victim. And with the amount of blood at this crime scene, this has passion written all over it. To prove her point, Agent Delarge will use some of the most sophisticated technology known to profiling. While the others engross themselves in the daunting task ahead, the fourth leg of this crime-fighting animal begins to stir. Back at the crime scene, Dr. Joseph Necrofiliano and his team are finishing up their exhaustive collection of forensic evidence. Now, it's important that the victim, I mean, the crime scene, remains virgin. <laughs> hours into the investigation. How you guys doing? Oh, she's kind of cute. You're gonna have some fun with her. You get any good pics? You stay out of my work Sunday. Where's the perp? You mean the victim's fiance? Huh? He's in there with Agent Delarge. All right, you guys carry on. I don't usually like to arrive until the amateurs get their work done. I mean, these guys do provide some valuable services, but in the end, it's guys like me who are the ones that solve these cases. She promised me that we were gonna get married someday. Why did this have to happen? Hush now. It'll be all right. Calm yourself. I know what it's like to be a crime victim. 
to be damaged. It's about time. Sure are getting cozy with our number one suspect. Number one suspect? What does he mean? I'll tell you what I mean. You've been giving her candy here the run around. She may be a woman, but she's not gonna fall for any of your stupid tricks, so you better start talking. What the hell do you think you're doing with my witness? You take your greasy paws off in this Easy, instant. Easy, candy girl. But this investigation calls for a bit of brute strength. I'll give you brute strength. With one of the victim's personal effects, Victoria Wainsgate attempts to glean whatever information she can. Her findings may penetrate this case right to the core. Feeling that the victim was a man. No, not exactly. I'm also guessing that the victim had dark hair and a dark complexion. I'm sorry, but she was blonde and fair skin. Now this one's got to be right. The victim, she worked in a cabaret. I knew this was going to be a waste of time. Wait, I'm just getting warmed up. Give me a clue, give me a clue. Where are you going? Wait, come on, give me a little hint. Work with me, give me a clue. Where are you going? Can we get a bite to eat? Unfortunately, Madame Wainsgate's psychic intuition as well as the case have gone as stone cold as Armstrong's corpse. Like hens at a pecking party, the other members of Crime Team USA quickly rally around in support of their misguided colleague. Well, she may have her psychic intuition and all, but I have my woman's intuition. A real profiler needs to understand the victim. They have to know to their core what it means to be damaged. Well, let's face it, when you're dealing with a psychic investigation, you're dealing with a very inexact science. Um, what will solve this crime are not crystal balls or divinations, but clues, forensic evidence, things like DNA, blood, semen, and other bodily secretions. I mean, I don't want to badmouth Wainsgate, especially as she has gone clairvoyant on my organ a couple of times, but, uh, between you and me, I wouldn't place a bet with my bookie based on any of the inside information she could give me. You know how these things are. We start with a series of images. They float in my head. Some could be relevant, some are not. I could be thinking about the crime scene. Next thing, I'm thinking about my lunch that I had yesterday. You never know. It's a process. One thing I can tell you for sure, this dildo has never seen the inside of a child. That, I know for sure. While they figure out the right way to move forward, some new and startling developments come back from the forensics lab, giving this case an unexpected turn. Stay tuned. Next, on an all-new gender bender... Susan B. Anthony was a suffragette who fought for the right of women to vote. However, could this icon of vaginal victory have a dark secret? And what was her real relationship to Elizabeth Cady Stanton? Was she Susan B. Anthony, or really Anthony B. Susan? Michael Halpin returns home to find his longtime fiance murdered. Crime Team USA is on the case, but the sheer horror of this crime may just unravel the tight-knit fabric of this crime-fighting organization. Back on the case, 
Joseph Necrophiliano makes a shocking discovery that will tear the entrails out of this investigation and put them through a meat grinder. After giving the body a thorough examination, I've determined that Miss Armstrong is neither a miss, missus, or even a miss. In fact, she's not a woman at all, but rather a very well-endowed male. But strangely enough, nothing during their 14-year engagement raised any suspicions on the part of her betrothed. However, it did raise Detective Sunday's suspicions. He drags Helprin back down to headquarters for another grilling. But Helprin gets a little help from his number one fan, Agent DeLarge. I always thought that she... I mean, he... It's so hard after so many years to say he... He said he was saving himself for when we got married. I think that's so romantic. Bullshit! Nobody stays with somebody for 14 years without getting a little taste. Now you better come clean here. You're either a murderer or a fruit. And at this point, I don't know which I is worse. I swear to God, I loved her. When he was a sheep, I was a she. was a he. I was also confused. Listen, boy. You leave the interrogation to me. Unless you want to be gargling your testicles again. You got a real friend here to be through me. You better come clean with our candy girl here, or I'm coming back for a piece of you. Um, I didn't mean that the way it sounded, all right? You get out of here. While these two investigators are at a standstill, the once discredited Victoria Wainsgate takes charge and uses her psychic abilities to get this investigation back on track. She visits the crime scene for the first time and comes up with some startling revelations. Don't be alarmed. This is really gruesome. Step aside. Something horrible, awful is going on here. I must assess the crime scene. Then we will know who the perpetrator is. The pain! Can you feel it? Much pain has been experienced here. Oh, the pain! And she's not the only one who knows. Have you ever drink with a hero before, baby? <laughs> I knew that fruit was the perp from the very beginning. Hey, let's have another round of drinks for the hero over here. Hey! Yet Agent DeLarge continues to ignore the evidence. I don't care what they say, sugar. I know you're innocent. Let's cuff him and bring him in. Over my dead body. 
Come on, Candy. We all know that you're not going to do this. Come on. 